Is, is there a way to tell for certain if a toxin or a combination of toxins is leading to a certain condition? That's where the science becomes very tricky. Uh, we can do animal studies, we can do human studies where we say those people who have high levels tend to have more of this particular disorder. But what the industry uses is that difficulty of saying, well, your case, we can't prove it. So in a trial, you have to prove without a shadow of a doubt, and that shadow's always there in science. But you get a preponderance of evidence, and you say, well, you know, when we see people with high phthalate levels, we see people with lower testosterone. And we know that phthalates can reduce testosterone. We know disorders that are caused by it. But is it directly caused? The cause and effect is a very tricky and slippery slope in science. So we tend to be a little bit more cautious. The people who do the research on it tend to say, we believe that this is an, you know, an issue. We believe it may cause. They never come out definitively. And that's where we have a little bit of a problem PR-wise with the public. Mm -hmm. They're saying, well, you didn't prove it. It's like what happened with tobacco. It took a lot to get to prove that smoking actually caused lung cancer. It took decades. We're having the same fight today. You know, one of the chemicals that I was talking about last night, uh, bisphenol A, it generates $100 million an hour in business around the world. That's a staggering number. But try to fight that and tell, yeah. you know, tell the industry, well, you've got to give that up. Not easy to do. Yeah. So that said, is there a way to test for certain chemicals within the body? And if so, is there benefit to that? One of the things that we used to do is we used to do testing of blood and fat tissue to mm -hmm. see, because fat tissue is where most of the toxins mm -hmm. reside, and blood is, you know, just an easy testing method. Well, the problem became everybody started showing up with it. So what benefit is that? If we know everyone has it, so now what do we do? Well, I believe that testing in urine is the way to go, because we want to see are we excreting it. If we know it's there, we don't want it to be there, is the person that we're looking at excreting it well? And are they excreting it in a manner that's safe? Because there's two different phases of detox, phase one and two. If you do phase one really well, but phase two poorly, you're going to be more symptomatic. You're going to have a lot more health issues. So we want to make sure the two of them are in sync. And when we look at these urine tests, we can tell. And we can also tell if a person's been exposed excessively to something. We want to see some of it coming out, because we know it's there. But if you start seeing very high levels, that's when we say, OK, we've got to start investigating your environment, what you have in your immediate environment, your local community, and what are you using as products that might increase your exposure. And that's when the biggest thing to help people is reduce exposure as much as possible. You know, we can not reduce everything, but we can do as good of a job as possible.